you guys and welcome back to my channel i am so excited to be here this is two videos in a week moving up in the world um anyway i did a video earlier in the week i got a new baby ferret if you haven't seen that video and you would like to see that video there will be a link in the description his name is oscar he's adorable my other ferrets love him it has been pretty awesome Okay, so without further ado, let's just talk about what we're gonna do. So today in this video, upon request, we are going to be making this tunnel. Um, this is the tunnel that I offer on my Etsy shop. Uh, it is actually not very difficult to make, but you would definitely want to have a sewing machine. Um, so if you don't sew and you like this tunnel or you're interested in purchasing one of these, please click the link to my Etsy shop in the description um, and you can check them out. Also, um, if you like this video, please click the like button. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps me out. Um, and if you click the notification bell, you'll never miss an upload. So without further ado, let's make some tunnels. So for this project, you're gonna need some boning. You're gonna need some clips, a pen, something to write with, a pair of scissors, rulers, you're gonna need two pieces of fleece, one for the outside, one for the inside, and some Pellon fusible fleece. Now we're gonna cut our inside and outside piece. Our outside piece is gonna be um, 24 inches long by 19 inches wide, and our inside piece is going to be 32 inches long by 19 inches wide. So we're gonna cut our pieces now. So basically, I'm making the outside piece about eight inches longer, so four inches longer on each end. Um, and the reason for that is because that's how we're going to create the roll that's going to hide our boning. And that the boning is what's going to make the tunnel um, stay, keep its shape. Next, you're going to cut out um, a piece of fusible fleece for each side of your tunnel. You want the fusible fleece to be about a half an inch shorter or an inch shorter than your tunnel on all the way around. So, um, and you only want it to be as long as the outside piece. So for me, I'm going to make this 23 by 18 and I'm going to make two of them. You don't need fusible fleece on the roll, just on the actual tunnel itself. All right. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to put your fleece with the wrong side facing up, you're going to add your fusible fleece to the wrong side of your fabric. There is a rough side, which you're not going to really be able to see, but you'll be able to feel that this is rough. That's the side you want to put down. That's the gluey side. Um, and so put this like this. And then for me, what I do is I get a towel and lay it over top. And you want to be careful because you will burn your fleece, so you don't want to hold this down there very long. Um, I do about five seconds all the way across until it's stuck. And you don't want to go like this. You just you want to pick up and put down, pick up and put down. You don't 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 do that. It's um, not with this particular fusible. And then you can pull this back and check it. Like, make sure that your edges are all stuck down. So, like, that's not... And if you get these where this, these are up, just do it a couple more seconds. Okay, so with your outside piece, I mean your inside piece, you want to... You don't need to put... Um, fusible fleece on the roll on the side where the, this is going to be your rolls these extra four inches so you kind of want to center it and leave um, where the rolls are you don't need fusible fleece you don't need it to be any thicker on that edge so you kind of want it to look like this and then you're going to do the same thing okay <clears throat> so now you have your fusible fleece sewn onto the back. You're going to take your um, outside piece and you're going to put it, face it right sides together and fold it in half long ways and clip it just at the top. And I would clip it pretty good because this tends to shift 
and you don't want it to shift. And you could put a clip here, but it doesn't really matter. I just do this to keep it in place, but you're gonna stitch just along the top. You're gonna take your inside fabric, which you also have a piece on, a fusible fleece, and you're gonna fold it right side together and clip it at the top. And you're gonna do the same exact thing. So now that you've sewn this, you're gonna wanna cut off any excess fabric. Maybe like leave it, you wanna leave about a quarter inch or so of fabric. And now you're going to take your outside piece and you're going to flip it right side out. And you're going to lay it so that the crease, the seam line, which you guys, I don't know if you can even barely see that, but there's a seam line right here. You're going to put it in the center and lay it facing up. You're going to take your outside piece Here's your seam line right here. And you're gonna wanna open your tunnel like this and lay it so the seam line is facing up. And then what I do is I fold this in half like this. Get your outside piece and feed it through. And you wanna line your seams up. So you wanna line the two seams together and then open it back up once you get it inside of there. And I'm gonna, and now this may take some finagling. You may have to mess with this a little bit to get them lined up perfectly. Um, and it just takes a little bit of messing with it. But if you look in here, this seam line matches this seam line. And there should be about this much space on the end that doesn't have any of this of your outside piece. All right, so now if you have some pins, you might wanna grab them. You're gonna to wanna to take your end and roll it over top like this. So let's say you got your roll. This is your raw edge. You're gonna to wanna to grab it about midway and just push it under with your fingers and push it under on the sides. It'll kind of automatically go under on the back as well. And then you just wanna make sure that your roll is even all the way around. You can eye it. Once you have the boning in it, if it's a little bit off, you're not gonna notice it. Um, and you can make it as thick as you want. There's no right or wrong for the thickness as long as your boning fits inside of there. So I'm just gonna make this even. Grab yourself a pin and pin it in place. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your sewing machine and you're gonna top stitch. And I normally top stitch right along this edge here by the pins. And then you don't top stitch all the way around. So I'll start maybe here and then I'll leave a space about this big. And you're gonna do that to both sides. And you're gonna have to remove your tray. Okay, sorry, I have a bunch of tunnels that I'm working on. So, um, I have a couple things I'm doing at once. Okay, so now that you've sewn your tunnel, you should have an opening that looks like it's just a tiny opening, and I'll show you on one that's easier to see. So, there's an should be an opening about this big. So if you see, I have sewn um, zigzag stitch across the edge of this. And the reason is so that I can, the boning won't come out when I put it in. So now I'm gonna take my boning and I'm going to put it inside the hole that I left. And I'm gonna feed it around the top edge. Just like we did with the open-ended snuggle sack. We've actually done this um, with a bunch of tunnels now it's going to be a little more difficult if you leave this white stuff on. Um, these tunnels are being sold on Etsy, so I always leave the white stuff on. It's an extra protection, and that's why I leave it on. It's just 
this helps it. It just is better professionally. It hold, it just creates a better shape. Once you get, once you can feel that it's on the other side, your boning should be about here. You're gonna want to make sure that the boning goes all the way around. So cut so that it goes all the way around, and you can cut right through it. And you're just gonna take your piece of boning and you're gonna shove it into this other hole so that it, it you have the boning all the way around. And you're gonna have to kind of mess with it. Let's do it this way, so you guys can see. And I'm just basically feeding it in so that it creates a circle. There we go. And then, hold on. Okay, so now the boning is inside of here. And what I like to do is I like to make sure the boning is at the very top up here. And if you have clips, you can do this. If not, just hold it when you sew with your, you know, just be careful when you're stitching. Um, and I just pin it, I just clip it up there in the top and if you don't have clips it's okay you could use hair clips you could just use a pin and stick it right underneath that that rim um because ultimately we're going to sew this shut and then i add an extra stitch line so now we're going to put boning in this end as well so now that you have put your boning in you're going to want to go back to your sewing machine and you're going to want to stitch that opening closed so i'm going to show you what one of my finished tunnels looks like um, I put the boning in this and then I stitched it closed and then I added an additional line right below the boning so that it holds the boning in place so that the boning doesn't slide between the top and this bottom line. You don't have to do this but if you have a space this big and your boning's only this big it's going to move around. So you can either make your roll smaller or you can add an additional line for decorative purposes. Um, so basically my tunnels kind of look like this and... Um, so anyway, let's go stitch this and then I'm going to put an additional stitch, but when you do this additional stitch at the top, make sure that your presser foot sits right below this boning. Do not stitch your boning. It will break your needle. So you can either use a straight stitch and I use it at five or you can use a decorative stitch if you have one. Um, some machines have decorative stitches, some don't. I use this decorative stitch and just increase the width so that it creates more of a wave. And basically I'm just going to stitch that opening closed. Okay, so in doing my additional stitch line to hold my boning in place, if you guys notice, if you notice my boning is right here. So I just want my presser foot to be the edge of my presser foot to be up against that boning so that I don't accidentally stitch over the boning. So we're just gonna put our extra stitch line in now. All right, so now what you're gonna wanna do is get your little strings that are attached and just trim off any strings from sewing. And don't forget to get the strings on the inside of your um, the little tails that will be on the inside. Okay, there you have it. There is your completed tunnel. And you can see through it. <laughs> and it stays open. And it's still soft and wonderful. It'll be squishy a little bit in the middle. The smaller you make it, the more sturdy it is. But this still stays like this for the most part. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any recommendations, any suggestions, any videos you wanna see, please drop those in the comments as well. And I will do my best to work on them. I am working on doing a cage cover tutorial. It should be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in. And I will see you next time.